I swear, like, I only decide to make videos when I'm looking super crazy and finished up. What's up, YouTube? It is your handy homegirl, Danny, and welcome back to Danny Did It. This is a channel dedicated to showing you how to do just about any and everything yourself. And I am back with another freaking home renovation video. And in today's video, we are going to be working on the California patch. Some people call it a blowout patch. California patch is all interchangeable. I use these when there's not really a place for you to screw the new drywall in, like to a stud um, when you're doing drywall patches. So in this case, we are covering some electrical plates. And um, again, there's nowhere for us to actually screw the drywall in. And so we're going to patch that up and make it look like nothing was ever there. So here it is, like I said, the electrician has covered up, I mean, removed the plate on here and my client wants the holes to be covered. We've got one over here, one over there. We've got a couple all over the house. So I'm gonna be doing quite a few, um, but I'm gonna just show you exactly the easiest way to do a California patch. Now there are a thousand ways to skin a cat. So if you do it differently, but get the same results, hey, wonderful job drop me some comments down below and let me know how you do your blowout patches so i'm going to be starting off with um just a strip of drywall i've got my tape measure my utility knife and a sharpie i'm going to go ahead by um just measuring the width and the length of the inside and of course i'm going to deduct it by about a quarter of an inch um on each side just so that the drywall can stuck it stuck flush into the wall and then the remaining paper around it is going to be used as what we would use tape for when we're doing drywall patches. So what I did was measure the length and the length and I transferred it over to the back of my drywall. So that is important. You want to put that on the back of your drywall. Now, um, now what you're going to do is just score the drywall all the way through both sides and horizontally. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just scored it, like I said, vertically and horizontally, because the important part is we wanna keep this piece of the drywall attached to the full paper and the perimeter, we wanna get rid of all of that stuff. So we just fold it over and gently peeling it off, leaving the front part of your drywall attached. Same thing on this side, and it peels off fairly easy. Doing the same thing on all sides, which will leave you with something like this, okay? And you're going to insert this directly into the wall, and we will use that perimeter of the paper to act as our tape if we were, you know, just fixing a, a regular drywall patch. So if you wanted to complete this project fairly quickly, you can use easy, uh, easy sand, you know, 5, 10, 15, 25, 90, whatever you want to use. Um, in this case, I am not in any particular rush just because we have much more things to do um, on this project. So I'm just using some regular white with joint compound and I'm just going to apply the mud around the perimeter generously so that again, it um, the paper of the drywall will have something to attach to once we go ahead and insert it into the hole in the wall. And I'm just using my four inch just to put the mud up here and I'm dragging it out a little bit further than it needs to be. So I can just clean it up once the patch is inserted. Okay. And again, you just want to push that right on in. Okay. Push that right on in. And you take your mud knife and just smooth everything out. Okay. 
once that's embedded, what I do like to do is go over it with my eight inch knife so that everything is covered and you have a nice uh, full patch and that everything is covered. And then tomorrow, once it dries, I can sand and put one more coat and you won't be able to see anything. Off camera, what I did was come back and sand it the next day and apply a second coat of mud. This is actually what it looks like on the third day. You can not see there was a hole there. Um, and then what you're going to do is finalize your sanding by one final sand. And of course, I'm using 220 grit sandpaper in between. I like to use my electric sander when there is no need for dust control. This house is completely empty and so I wasn't worried about it. So I fanned out all of the edges making sure that the wall is nice and smooth. From here you can go ahead and prime your wall and paint it whatever your top coat color is and you have a completely covered hole. Thank you guys so much for watching until the end. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. For more videos, make sure you click the bell notification as well. And I'm going to see y'all in my next video. Peace.